there is a real competition between the U.S. and China. Have you tried DeepSeek? I, I personally have not. I've seen it. I th yeah, and I think amongst the things that they did and I thought was smart was they put out what's called a chain of thought. So you can actually see how the technology is doing what we call reasoning. You know, OpenAI released something called O1 back in September that has the same tech. We actually think ours continues to be ahead and we're going to be releasing some additional models, including O3, which comes out on Friday. So I think important to keep in mind, you know, we as the U.S., because of OpenAI, continue to maintain the lead. We need the infrastructure because infrastructure is destiny here if the U.S. wants to win this race. Crystal Hain, Chief Global Affairs Officer at OpenAI. Thanks very much. So we finally have a potential release date from OpenAI regarding O3 Mini. A couple of weeks ago, Sam tweeted this, that they have finalized a version and are beginning the release process, planning to ship in a couple of weeks. There were reports from writers that OpenAI had planned to launch O3 Mini at the end of January and the full O3 afterwards. There's a lot of excitement around the model, but the main news today was a release of a couple of open source models, which we're going to explore later in the video. And I'll also show you where you can access the distilled version of DeepSeek for absolutely free through an API. And this is US-based. Okay, so folks at OpenAI are really hyping up O3 Mini. So here's a tweet from Dylan. O3 Mini is just so good. Exceptional intelligence and blazing speed. I haven't been this excited for a model since GPT-4. And I personally hope this is going to be a huge milestone, hopefully. Because uh, based on the initial uh, benchmarks, the full O3 was great on Arc Prize. But the major news uh, on Thursday was the release of Mistral Small 3. And they finally released an open source model with Apache 2.0 license. In the last video, I mentioned that Mistral hasn't released a large language model in a while. Seems like they heard me. Their focus was performance and latency. So this model provides a really good balance between performance and the latency or inference speed. Inference is becoming more and more important. So this is really good to see that we have a smaller dense model, well optimized for inference. Now, this is not uh, a reasoning model. You cannot use it for reasoning purposes and it's neither trained with RL nor in synthetic data. So it seems like everything that is being used is human generated data and therefore they say that it's earlier in the production pipeline than models like DeepSeek R1. So they probably have a reasoning model in process, which is going to be released pretty soon. And it's interesting to see that everybody is comparing their models now with DeepSeek R1. Now in terms of performance, it seems to be a really good balance for its size, especially when you compare it with the bigger 70 billion struct model. I'm also really happy to see that Mistral is probably one of the few providers from the Western world that are comparing their models with Quinn models. I'll probably create a more detailed video on this and we'll also test the model, but I wanted to highlight a couple of things from this release. The first one was open source models at Mistral. So they say, we are renewing our commitment to using Apache 2.0 license for our general purpose models as we progressively move away from the MRL licensed models. So it's a really good news that now they're going to be releasing their general purpose models with Apache 2.0. Because Mistral started as a company that released almost all of their models in the beginning as Apache 2.0. So you can download this model and run it locally. And it's also available through their serverless API on their platform. The second part, which was interesting, is human evaluations. Almost all of model creators report their results on benchmarks, but they conducted side-by-side -side evaluation with an external third-party vendor, where they had a set of over 1,000 proprietary coding and journalist prompts. And then the human evaluators were asked to select their preferred models based on the responses and they were not told which model is generating the response. So basically, based on that blinded results, they looked at the preferences of human evaluators when it comes to model responses. 
This approach is widely used in medical research, so it's really great to see. And this kind of gives you a really a good idea of whether people are going to like responses from your model or not. The chatbot arena uh, leaderboard also does the same thing. Now, apart from the Mistral Small 3, there was another release. This is Tulo 3 405P. It's from Allen AI Institute. And this model surpasses the performance of DeepSeek V3, which is a pretty huge news. Now, they had to develop a new reinforcement learning technique called verifiable rewards. And using this, they were able to scale the Llama 3.1405P and outperform both DeepCV3 as well as GPT-40. So they also released a blog post called Scaling the Tulu 3 Post-Training Recipes to Surpass the Performance of DeepSeq V3. And as I said before, DeepSeq uh, is kind of becoming the gold standard, which is pretty awesome. Now, since we are on the topic of DeepSeq, let's look at a couple of other announcements. The first one is uh, that Together AI is now hosting DeepSeq R1 Distilled Llama 70 Billion model for free. So here's the tweet, new 100% free API endpoint for DeepSeq R1, Llama 70 billion distill. So this is not the full 600 billion plus model, but it is a distilled 70 billion model, but still you have a free API. So they host these models in uh, their own data centers and none of the data is ever sent back to DeepSeq. And that's the beauty of open source. You don't really have to worry about data privacy because you can potentially host these models yourself, or you can use something like Together AI if you are worried about sending your data back to China. The free model endpoint has reduced rate limits and performance compared to the paid turbo endpoints for any of the DeepSeq R1 uh, models. So you still get uh, a free API endpoint, which is always a good news. But if you're looking for a paid service, AWS, just like Microsoft, is now hosting DeepSeq R1 model on Amazon Bedrock. So you have quite a few options if you don't want to use the official API, which I, I think is having some issues because a lot of people were using it and they were not able to serve all the API requests. So it's great to see that there are options now within the US that you can use. Now, in another news, Gemini enabled Gemini 2.0 Flash, not the experimental version, on Gemini app. So if you go to Gemini, google.com, you can now see the Gemini 2.0 Flash. So this is the stable version, not experimental anymore. I'm going to be testing this model because it looks very interesting. So stay tuned for that. Now, if you have made uh, this far in the video, I wanted to show you a trick that I, I love to use. Uh, it's not working for me anymore, but um, I will recommend everybody to test it out and see if they can make it work. Now this is not working for me anymore. So let's say if I tried this, I always get, sorry, deep six search service is busy. Please disable search or try again in a few minutes. But I was using this on a daily basis. And the reason was that along with English websites, it will also look up Chinese websites. But the responses were always in English. Chinese uh, websites or internet has a lot of information that is not available on the Western websites. Now, I'm specifically uh, talking about technical things. I'm really not interested in any politics, but I do find that uh, there are a lot of technical stuffs that are shared on uh, Chinese websites that is not available on English websites. So if it's still working for you, I'd highly recommend to use the search capabilities with DeepSeq R1. You will, you can thank me later for that. A video on testing Mistral Small 3 is coming soon. So if you are interested in that, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Anyways, I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching and as always, see you in the next one.